Okay, our second speaker is Jose Angel. Um, he is uh, working at the University of Amsterdam and he uh, will tell us about uh, how to generate structured data from Wikipedia biographies. Okay, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, yeah, so my name is Angel and I will present how to automatically generate a more structured data from English Wikipedia biographies. Uh, we use English because sadly or happily, it depends how you want to see it. In English, there are a lot of uh, technological um, advances that allow us to use uh, NLP in an easier fashion. But uh, in principle, we can apply the same techniques to other languages. It just depends on your resources. Uh, so the main goal of uh, taking this approach is to get uh, Let's say this is the idealistic goal, to have uh, rich structured biographical data for as many entities as possible, including for underrepresented groups or non-canonical people. Uh, I think this is a bit in line with how the discussion centered yesterday, so I'm a bit happy to present this. Um, so in general, can NLP help us with this uh, idealistic goal? Uh, and we have at the beginning a research question, and then you normally want to go to a, a bunch of digital biographies already, and there are also very nice uh, resources in Wikidata and Wikipedia. Uh, but here, can we use natural language processing to get even more uh, structured information? Um, and for this, I will present a use case. Uh, let's say I want to know a bit more about Ida Pfeiffer, the uh, Austrian explorer. Uh, so I'm a millennial, so my first uh, choice is to go to Wikipedia and find out what is it. Uh, there's a long text, I can read it. Uh, yeah, Ida Laura Pfeiffer, uh, born in uh, 1797 in Vienna, Austrian explorer, etc., etc. Uh, but the idea of having structured data is if I can have the highlights already, which were the important people uh, in Ida Pfeiffer's life, the important events. Um, we will use NLP to find out this. Um, but there is also already a nice resource from Intavia. Uh, for now, you will have to believe me, this is the Intavia interface. Uh, my colleagues will uh, present more about this. Uh, but I, I went to the interface and looked, okay, what does Intavia know about Ida Pfeiffer? And uh, this is what it presents me. Uh, so here we see, okay, uh, there's an entry of Ida Pfeiffer in the APIS uh, biographical lexicon, and, and there's also uh, in the GND resource. Um, here below, I can see a small network. Uh, basically, it's a bit disappointing. Uh, just one place, four events, 11 objects. Okay, it's something. It's a place to start. Uh, we see in the map, uh, we see a little dot there. It's Vienna displayed, which is nice because she was born and died there. Uh, but she is a woman explorer, right? So what happened to her world travels? Uh, we want to see that. Um, uh, following with the Intavia interface, uh, it presents us a very nice timeline with the events, uh, what happened in each year, etc. And here we can see, okay, there are four events displayed. So the same question, can we get more events in this timeline? Uh, we have some relations, uh, especially to cultural heritage objects, uh, some uh, works that she wrote. Um, yeah, it's basically that, uh, her birth and her death. And we have some... Uh, text, in this case in German here. Uh, so we could exploit the German text, but uh, we're going to instead go to Wikipedia and retrieve this uh, information that we have available in English. Uh, so yes, can we find more people, places, or events in the text of Ida Pfeiffer in Wikipedia? And the answer is yes. Uh, here is uh, the output of the NLP already displayed in the Intavia interface. So immediately it stands out like, uh, well, first of all, here is the link to her uh, Wikipedia biography and also the Wikidata entry. So if you want to know even more about her, you can go there and um, find out more. And here is a richer network. So now we have more places and people involved. And the map is, looks much better. Okay, yes, she was a world traveler. She went to Madagascar. She went to New Orleans, uh, in India, etc. So this looks much better already. Uh, likewise, with the timeline, we can see uh, more density with the events. Um, so yeah, just to quantify, okay, instead of one place, now we have 16, now we have 26 events, and five people, not only her in the center, but there's other people involved in her life. 
and 15 cultural heritage objects. Uh, to, to show you a bit more of how do these events look like, uh, this was completely automatically extracted. Uh, so, okay, we can start with, uh, okay, the first event found automatically was as she gave birth to her son, Alfred, in 1821. Then in 1924, uh, the other son, Oscar, and later it gets more into, okay, she traveled to Istanbul in 1842, uh, returned to Beirut in uh, July, etc. So you get the idea. We have some key events displayed there. Later, of course, you have to go to the text to get more context, but uh, this is already very helpful until uh, the last events when she died in 1858. Um, yeah. So there are also relations to places, in this case Vienna, where she was born, when she, where she lived, and um, also where she died, so that's why it's three times Vienna. Um, and relations to cultural heritage objects, so we have, she wrote the, A Woman's Journey Around the World, and then she wrote A Lady's Second Journey Around the World, uh, etc. And if we go down in the list, for example, Descent of Man appears, so that's written by Darwin, and then I wondered why is it there? I went to the biography, and it turns out Darwin cited her in Descent of Man. Uh, so I found very interesting this. So she was that famous back then. Uh, she was even mentioned by Darwin, right? So it, it's a pity that the old resources don't uh, have more information about these important women, uh, but now with NLP we can try to bring out more uh, of those people. Okay, the next question is, can I visualize any entity in the in Tavia interface? Because in this case, she was an Austrian person, and okay, we have links to Austrian biographies. Uh, but the truth is, because we are using Wikipedia, yes, we can uh, really display any person that appears in Wikipedia. Um, as an example, I went there and I looked for uh, Benito Juarez, uh, one of the most famous Mexican presidents. Uh, yeah, he was a Zapoteca. He was born in the mountains in Oaxaca. He later learned Spanish, became a lawyer, and then became president in one of the most uh, disturbing moments to live in Mexico. Like everyone wanted to invade us, uh, Great Britain, France, uh, Spain. Uh, and he, there was even an Austrian emperor for three years. And then he was there, like our defender for those times. So he's a national hero. And then I put him in Tavia, and we can see, yes, we can display his biography with the same tools. It, a very dense network, which goes in line with his life because he really uh, had a lot to do. And then, yeah, sadly, I don't have much more time to talk about this, but uh, the idea is that you can display anyone, basically. Okay, so enough propaganda. How did uh, we actually do this, right? Uh, <laughs> so here I put the QR code in case you're interested to see the, uh, the pipeline is open source, and there's also the link. I will put the code again in the end if you're interested, if I convince you that this is nice. <laughs> um, yes. So this is uh, the big picture. There are three main modules. They can work independently. Let's say you are only interested in getting a bunch of Wikipedia biographies and save them in your computer and then work with that. You can, okay, just use the, the blue part. Uh, for the pink part is uh, NLP systems, uh, some machine learning classifiers that uh, work on English text. That's what we are using to get the structured data. And then uh, the most important part is the green part. Okay, now that I have a bunch of structured data, what do I do with it? And you can do your own data analysis, you can uh, apply your own use cases, and very importantly, evaluation. Uh, but Anske will talk more about that later. Uh, in this case, I will focus on this uh, part in both, which is, okay, how do I go? I have an output of a bunch of classifiers, so how do I uh, get it into the Intavia data model to display it as nicely as you just saw? So that's what I'm going to show. Uh, yeah, for the Wikipedia extraction part, what we are doing is basically getting a first name and a last name. And ideally, we also need the birth year and the death year, so it's easier to disambiguate. And we are sure we are getting the right person. Some people have the same name. Um, we can also do group search. So we can say, for example, all of the people connected to an art movement and retrieve from Wikidata all of this information. And for each person, entry, uh, we process their biography. And importantly, we're saving all of the metadata in uh, Wikipedia, all of the links and the categories, uh, images, etc. So you can uh, make use of that later if you need to. And then, yes, I put every time a script available or notebook available. Uh, so you, if you want to start exploring, you can go to those scripts directly. Um, as for the pipelines, we didn't reinvent the wheel. We basically took some state-of-the-art systems for English out there. 
Spacey, Flare, Alien NLP, and uh, Heidel Time. And I will explain how we assemble them together. Uh, yes, so the idea, again, we are, have raw text uh, on one point, and we want to get structured information on the other. So what, how do we use the pipeline? These are the color codes of uh, what each library does. Uh, so the first steps is we tokenize the text, so we uh, identify the words, and the, uh, we use syntactic parsing to identify sentence boundaries. Uh, this is because of processing reasons. You cannot just put a huge text uh, and expect the classifiers to work. Like if it has 10,000 words, it's very hard. So it's important to identify sentences so we can have uh, smaller chunks of text and apply the classifiers to that. Uh, so then we have six classifiers working in parallel. Uh, the first one uh, identifies time expressions, so dates like 31st of March of uh, 1851 or years or maybe last September, or two weeks later, etc. Those are time expressions. Uh, we have also a named entity recognizer, which identifies uh, persons, organizations, and places. Uh, we have an uh, entity linker, which tries to disambiguate do those uh, entities identified. Um, a relation extraction. So we know persons and we know places, but uh, how were they related? Did they live in this place? Did they die in this place? These kind of basic relations we can extract. And the blue part is to enrich even more the event part. So semantic row labeling, uh, we like to define it in computational linguistics as who did what to whom, which I think is very uh, relevant for biographies. Um, so we are exploiting that similarity to, uh, to extract more events. And lastly, coreference resolution. Uh, so you don't refer to the person always with their first name, right? It's not Ida Pfeiffer did this, and then Ida Pfeiffer did that. You use pronouns, so we use reference resolution to link the pronouns to the main entity and that way know who is the subject of the events. Okay, so now we have a bunch of classifiers. Um, so we have to unify them. I call this the Intavia Blender, just to give it a name that fits in the box. Uh, basically, we are uh, finding the similarities in the classifier outputs to try to build events that make sense, uh, such as the ones that you saw listed. Uh, we use Wikipedia metadata to help us uh, disambiguate, for example, which is the hardest task, I think, in, in this case. And that's, that's why how we end up uh, with structured data. And yeah, scripts available. We have a test case uh, with Albert Durer, uh, how to use the pipelines. It explains step by step uh, what is uh, each component of the pipeline doing. And, or you can run the full pipeline with a script uh, if you feel comfortable running things with scripts. It's there in the repository. Um, yeah, so just to give more examples of, of the outputs, for example, we have here the, the named entity uh, outputs, which give us the, the persons and the locations, but it only knows that. Uh, on the other hand, we have some relations, place of birth, born in, and child of, and it's linking the uh, entities in the sentence. Um, but this relation extraction uh, is kind of limited, so that's why we are using also the semantic role labeling output. If you look at the first sentence, it's the same kind of event that was extracted by the relation extractor, but the second sentence wouldn't be identified by a relation classifier because uh, there's no relation such as denied. But the SRL identifies it, and then we can get, okay, she uh, was denied membership by the Royal Geographical Society in London because she was a woman. Um, and then, okay, we have kind of this relation, the Royal Geographical Society denied membership to she. But who is she? And this is why we have coreference resolution, and because of that output, we can link it, and we can get our clean relation. Okay, Royal Geographical Society denied membership to Ida Pfeiffer. And yeah, that's how it get, gets constructed, and the entity linker just gives us the Wikidata outputs. Okay, we can also do group analysis, as I mentioned, so you can do it with Wikidata queries, or you can create your own uh, list on a text file, and then for each person in the list, uh, you just run the pipeline. Uh, so instead of having to write your own uh, query in the Wikidata endpoint, uh, you run it here, and for example, you can find for 800 movements of art, uh, you, you can use Wikidata as a support. Uh, in this case, I use uh, a query to retrieve people uh, related to Art Nouveau, and uh, this is the output in our script, uh, and it found 122 people involved with Art Nouveau. So immediately, we don't have to do it by hand. The system runs 122 queries of biographies and processes everything and puts it in the file for you. And this is how it would look like in the um, Intavia uh, interface. 
So you can see, find connections between the people that belong to movements, etc. And yeah, I, I think I ran out of time, so I will just jump into the conclusions. Well, discussion is important because it, this was a very pragmatic approach, but uh, there are other uh, things to take into account. Um, and NLP outputs are noisy, so we have to remember this. Um, so the researcher is the most important person still in this pipeline. You, as a researcher, are the one who has to decide if something is true or noise, but this is already some help to give you the outputs. Uh, yeah, extension to other languages is possible. Um, we can discuss more about that later. And yeah, so this is a full text to structure English pipeline. Uh, we showed how NLP ha can help us to get more information, especially for underrepresented groups or non-canonical people. And the possibility of group analysis. And also, yes, this is an open source tool, including notebooks and everything to get started. You just need to go to the link, which I put here again. Contact me on Twitter. This is my email. Thank you. <laughs>